I have arrived at Sothman Lake and this is where I'm going to kick off the Grassy River Loop. Got a pretty good spot here. There's a lake right there, Sothman Lake, and uh, I've got this access point to myself right now so I'm just going to sleep here tonight. Anyway, I'm going to get uh, settled in and I think I'll just sleep in the car tonight and then I can get going tomorrow morning. It's quarter past five and I can no longer toss and turn in the front seat of the car. I have to sit up and just be awake. Managed to get about four hours of sleep in, but that's fine because look at this forecast. Forecast is just uh, just a delight. I'm super stoked for this. It's almost 7 a.m. I'm on my way. And the loons are going crazy around here. Even all night they kind of were. calm and chilly and I've got a short paddle to the first portage which I think is the longest of the trip 900 meters Sothman Lake has been quite nice very calm quiet except for the loons and I'm paddling into the easternmost part of the lake. I think the portage is here. I have a map that's um, kind of low resolution. Hopefully everything is pretty self-evident. This trip is uh, I think 80 to 100 kilometers. My right elbow is already bugging me so it's a bit of a concern. But it's held up through a lot. It'll hold up through this. This is a pike and walleye trip. And that's pretty much the only species that are found on the route. The lake I'm trying to camp on today, I think is stocked with splake as well. But aside from that, it's all pike and walleye. Here it is. Online I read that these uh, little nesting boxes were at a lot of the starts and ends of the portages. There is a small flag there, which is kind of hard to distinguish against the dying cedar leaves there. And the takeout looks pretty bad. <laughs> No dead fell on this one, but uh, lots of ferns, and uh, I almost couldn't find it. There's no marker for this one, given how overgrown it is. It's hard to see that there's even a trail from the shore, and another pretty tricky takeout. This route might be a lot more wild than I expected. Cool. There's a portage into Charmandy Lake that way. And that's the lake that I think has splake in it. And I think a campsite on that portage, so I'm gonna go check that out and see if that'll work for me tonight. Forgot something on the portage, heading back. These are pretty important. Well, I paddled through uh, kind of a dense wetland, hopped out of the canoe, sloshed through some muck, bushwhacked, and I'm not seeing any semblance of a trail into Charmandy Lake, so I think I'm going to call it. Now to get back out of this wetland. And now I'm paddling through the narrows into the northeast end of the lake and looking for my portage. Getting tired. Last night's sleep did not go very far. Another nesting box to mark the way. Takeouts are clearly just consistently not very good. Pretty overgrown. On Nugent Lake now, and I think all the portages are behind me for today, and most of them for the trip actually. It's nice to think about. Yeah, it's a long trip, but not too many portages. I'm getting really hungry. 
really tired and looking forward to setting up camp on uh, Halliday Lake. I hope the campsite that was indicated on the map I have is there this time. Oh, right on cue. Just turn the camera on. Oh man, he absolutely inhaled this lure, it's crazy. Ah! It's that big paddle tail I use, and it's all in his mouth, and he's not that big. Come here, fella. It's a chore catching pike sometimes. Some people say that. I love pike. Didn't think that guy was gonna make it. it took a few minutes for him to revive, but I'm really glad he did because I don't feel like filleting it, and a bony little pike isn't what I feel like for lunch. Got a brick of boursin that I want to eat, some caramelized onion crackers. That's all I want right now. Man, the pike in this lake are super aggressive. That first one inhaled the bait, and this guy T-boned this lure. Look at that. Oh, ow! Had a pike at the boat and I was hoping to just unhook him in the water and he flapped his tail and just drove a wave of water over everything. Not big at all. But he soaked me. Pike in this lake are just crazy. They're hammering my, my baits. And I found at least one thing that they're feeding on. No, not me. Tons of little minnows. This guy's is still alive actually, but he's floating, so his minutes are numbered, unfortunately. Turn the corner around the northeast end of uh, Nugent Lake, and I'm into a river section here, and it's pretty cool. Very fertile, stacked with minnows, they're all over. Nice green grasses. I feel like a moose sighting is uh, inevitable on this trip. I'm into Holiday Lake now, at the north end, and this is the first campsite. There are a couple of other options. The trip report that I read said that this one was pretty used feeling, and I'm certainly getting that feeling. Oh yeah, there's a classic, the portable toilet, lovely. Yeah, um, I hate it. It's pretty much I hate everything I hate about uh, a boat access campsite. So I'm gonna check out the other one. It's still boat accessible, but um, the trip report said that it was better. I've got a view of the mountain from here, which I think is called Sansawaju. Whoa, it's hard in the waves to use zoom, but. Anyway, it's out there. I'll, I'll have another closer look at it when I come back down the grassy river later in a few days. On the next point east of that nasty campsite, there's a very old campsite that appears to not have been used in a long time. Fire pit looks totally out of use. This chair has been there a long time. And it's a much nicer site in the sense that it's not a dump. But uh, the water access is terrible. Getting the canoe out of the water, which I would need to right now because of the wind. I don't want it getting battered there all the time. This is kind of a hassle and I hate sites with bad water access. So I'm going to keep moving on. Another big paddle tail lost to these aggressive pike. And that stinks because uh, I was really counting on this lure for a lot of my trolling through the grassy river because it's weedless. Hmm, and now I'm all out. That's too bad. Found a great site. It's on a little point. That's the uh, start of the grassy river out there. Halliday Lake is on the other side of that. And it's terrific. I'm really surprised it wasn't marked on my map. It's not bad at all. It's uh, a little overgrown, but it's all tiny, tiny stuff. And it's a pretty nice bed of moss underneath, so 
I think I'll sleep great tonight. That's nice. Enjoying some hammock time here after a pretty long, tiring day. But a great day. Beautiful weather. Beautiful site. Reestablished the fire pit there and the rest of the site in general. Cleared some paths over there. It's weird how uh, unused it seemed. It's a great site. Great water access. It's beauty. So here's a look at the route. I launched there, came through the three portages today, tried to get into Charmindy Lake there, and I couldn't find that campsite. Moved on, came through here, that was that gross site. On that next point there, there was another site, the overgrown one. And then I'm on that little point there. Anyway, tomorrow I head up here. So at least uh, now and doing a longer day today, I have a shorter day tomorrow. First walleye of the trip. Nice little fish. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, this uh, this should be a pretty good fishing trip. I've had many pike hit from shore here, and now walleye. Now that it's getting darker, got a lot of faith right now. Left the campsite better than I found it. Check. Always try to do that. I need to find campsites with uh, morning sun though. It's so hard to wake up and do things in the morning now that it's falls coming on. It's cold. It's so hard to get out of the sleeping bag. The pike action here continues to impress. It's crazy. Some awesome strikes and jumps too. I was just bringing this one in, the, the lure. And then right at the boat, faster than I could even imagine the pike. Whoa, there's a flip. <laughs> uh, faster than I can imagine the pike coming from the bottom up. Like I was about to lift it out of the water. Just boom, like a bullet. The wind is blowing early today and for once it's a good thing. It's not blowing hard yet. It was harder as I was on the Halliday Lake. As I get into the river, it's softening, but uh, that's gonna help take me to where I need to go as planned. First time in forever I feel like the winds are cooperating on a trip but still early. Who knows if the forecast will hold true for the rest of the trip. This river sure is living up to its name. It's pretty thick. If you had to paddle through this and a headwind it'd be pretty slow going. But at least uh, that keeps all the boats out. I didn't realize it was so choked up in here. On the map, it's like a nice, wide-looking river channel. But I highly doubt boats would be coming through here. Often you have to stand up just to see where you're going. Heard a big crack of a branch somewhere over there a couple minutes ago. So I just wedged myself into the grass here and uh, waited to see if anything would come out, but nothing. Sounded like it might have been a moose. It was a pretty big crack. One time in Algonquin, uh, I was hiking, I think the Mitzi Lake Trail, looking for a moose, and I found one. <laughs> uh, there were a couple people walking ahead of me, well ahead, and I guess they startled this cow, and the cow came charging through the bush like a bulldozer. It was incredible the noise it made and uh, just the power of it. And uh, it came through the bush and unbeknownst to the moose, I think, I don't think it had any ill intention toward me. Uh, it, uh, it ran just like a couple of feet past me. It almost bulldozed me. <laughs> My knees were shaken for like 10 minutes after that moment. That was scary, but awesome. Really starting to choke up now. The main channel is pretty thin. So thick. Thankfully the water is deep enough. It's, I don't know, a couple of feet. So at least you're not bottoming out like you are in some places like this. 
and these grasses are covered in seeds and they're just filling up the boat right now. <laughs> Not to mention uh, these spiders. Little spiders, they can close themselves up really thin so they can uh, hide behind the blades of grass. But yeah, there are lots of those in the boat too. They're even making spider webs on my legs. And then these little like moth things too. Everything that's on the grass is falling into the boat. Beaver's putting together a dam here. Met some rapids strewn with uh, big logs and there's a portage around it just right back there. This is an awesome portage. It's actually kind of a nice one like I'm enjoying it. It crosses over an old logging road which is now growing over. The road used to cross the river and for whatever reason they spared this one old growth pine. That is a very big one. Uh, and at the other end of the portage there's a great view of this river uh, flowing out here. It's a little waterfall. Surprise, there wasn't too much current in the river. Hardly any. But now suddenly it's uh, narrowed into this nice little waterfall. And the takeout and put in are great. So this uh, portage is a pleasure. I'm into Canoe Shed Lake now, and uh, it's not very beautiful, not much charm to it, and uh, at the hydro corridor there was a little boat launch with a truck, and I thought, uh oh, someone launched a boat, and they did, there's a boat on the lake. Yeah, I plan on spending two nights here, but it's not, not very charming at all. Well, it's a boat access lake and uh, the site isn't occupied, at least that boater isn't camping here. But like all boat access sites, this one's full of junk and gross. But I can't see anything else from here. The wind is raging, so I don't want to go paddling around. So I have to take it tonight. Tomorrow, we'll see. All right, the campsite cleanup is well underway. It got all this metal collected and all these broken bottles and pieces of metal and here's the burnable garbage and the fire pit is just a joke it's huge it's like a meter and a half long by a meter wide so I'm gonna move some of the big stones and cut the size in half and ants really love fire pits this one was covered in eggs I just lifted it up like two minutes ago eggs everywhere and now they're all being carted off rapidly back into the colony but I'm sure if I lift up another one oh, look at that just crawling the eggs aren't on this one very much but now that the site's cleaned up uh, I don't hate it quite so much and I think I could stay here for two nights it's not perfect but uh, the wind direction doesn't really help me tomorrow, and it does the following day big time, so it makes sense to wait because that's a big day. It's like close to 30 kilometers that I want to cover that day. And I think the motorboat might be gone. I haven't seen it in a while. I had a nap, I ate, and had a coffee. Feeling less mad about the campsite situation. Alright, we have a campsite again. It's a good feeling. Especially this purge. Burn up all the burnable garbage and toilet paper. Cleared some good paths back in the forest there so that people can do their business well away from the site. Got an arsenal of firewood here to uh, burn everything up. Reestablished the fire pit, which is now half the size. It's still bigger than it needs to be. I even 
uh, covered up the dirt with some uh, leaf litter. Pretty nice touch, eh? In a past life, I was Martha Stewart. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the cleaning ceremonies are about to begin. We ask that you turn off all pagers and cell phones at this time. Not even 9 a.m. and it's already very warm. Today is supposed to be an unseasonable scorcher. The high is like 26 or something and it's mid-September in northern northeastern Ontario so that's pretty darn hot but I don't have to do that much today all I have to do is fish, reed and hammock. I'm also gonna explore the lake as fully as I can and see if there are other campsites. I'm in the northwest bay of the lake which is by far the nicest part of the lake. There's a nice island in it and the, I don't know, there's some character to the landscape unlike the main lake which I wasn't a big fan of. I could see a campsite there on the northern end of the island and that would be fantastic. So there is indeed a campsite on the north end of the island and it absolutely kills me that I'm camped where I am for two nights and not here. This is a gem. Oh no. <laughs> it's so nice. Easily the best site on the on the lake. Has to be. Good little fire pit here. I can see one beer can in it, uh, but it just looks magical in there. It's all covered in moss. Little old spruce trees. Nice stack of firewood here. One glass bottle, so far less garbage than was on my site. One garbage bag too, but that's okay. It's not that bad. And then a great tent pad in here, lots of space. Oh, that just kills me. If only I had known. It's great water access too, and even great swimming. You can jump off this rock and it drops off nicely for, you know, great swimming depth. Wow, great site. Here's the location, if anyone's wondering. This about sums up today. Little Dink Pike. I'm gonna work my way back to camp and try again in the evening. There's some loons over there. <coughs> Nothing like paddling on glass. In mid-September in northeastern Ontario when it should be chilly but it's just beautiful. You could hear a pin drop right now. Uh, I got into one walleye so far, small, and I've had nine pike on the line today. So if that's a bad day in this lake, then I guess there's some hope for it after all. Well, I know video can't pick it up, but uh, I'm looking at the aurora right now, very faintly. And it's not much, but uh, it's super exciting for me, because tonight isn't even that high activity. It's a bit higher than yesterday. Tomorrow's supposed to be high, and the following two nights, very high. So I feel so sure that I'm going to see it. I felt that way before, but man, <laughs> this is just thrilling, even this. It's just a glow. It's not even shimmering green lights or anything. Thought of it being close. I'm excited. Bye bye, campsite. Never see you again. Kind of irks me that I spent half a day cleaning it up. Now that I know there are two other sites which are better. So I'm going from the top of my map, uh, on that can site, all the way down the grassy river. All the way down. And then branching off there into Ferris Lake. Back on the river, and it's looking so beautiful right now. Sun's up, and there's dew covering all the tall grass here. Water's perfectly calm. And the air, I wish I could, I always wish I could capture smells on video. 
think it would be the next revolution in TV. Uh, the air smells so sweet right now. It's just beautiful. So I specifically planned this day to come all this way south because there was supposed to be a north-northwest wind. And right now it's a south breeze. So that is not good. It's going to be a really tough day making it to Ferris Lake if uh, I have the wind against me. Got a fish on. Trolling that big curly tail. And this section of the river is so much nicer than coming up to Canoe Shed. As soon as I hit those... That's ah, just a little pike. As soon as I hit those uh, little rapids, that little falls, the whole river changed and it became much less grassy, except for getting right into Canoe Shed Lake. It grasses up there, but now it's looking a lot clearer, and that's nice. Oh, don't jump in the boat. <laughs> it's not warm enough to get soaked yet. It's getting pretty warm, though. Same old. Clomping through the water over there. Can't see it, but I can hear it. It's gotta be a moose. Oh, there. It's a bear. That's bizarre. Well, I should probably get going. It's coming. It's coming right for me. Not that far away. That's interesting. <laughs> Bear. Okay. Now I'm not too worried. He's turning around. Huh. What is he doing in there? Cool. I've still got a fish on the line. <laughs> Anyway, he's still mucking around over there. I'm gonna get this fish off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Absolutely inhaled this curly tail. I don't, know, I don't know how they get so much in their little mouths. The wind's getting stronger and stronger and it's not changing direction. It's kind of frustrating because I largely based the trip around this day and being able to cover a lot of around uh, quickly with the wind and of course it is exactly the opposite of what was forecasted unlike the last three days which have been really on point today the day where it really counted uh, it's not going my way so finally into Ferris Lake and this is the first campsite on the north end nice site it's elevated Good view of the lake but uh, the one I'm targeting is down at the other end, so I still have about three kilometers of paddling to go, probably. Wow. As you come around the bend here, this big hill comes into view. There are hills all around, but that one's the biggest in the area. Finally, on the southern site on uh, Ferris Lake, and it's got an incredible view. Beautiful cliff over there. On the tops of the hills around here, the uh, the canopy is starting to change. There's kind of the normal amount of garbage. Can of coke there. Just left standing up. Zero you know what's given. There's another one. Bit of garbage in the fire and a couple of uh, uncovered poop piles back there. But otherwise a solid site and uh, it's actually quite large. It goes through there. There's a path system to the north side of this point and there I'll have a wide open view of the lake to hopefully see the aurora tonight. Now it's time to set up camp. But first this absolutely needs to happen. Oh, 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 oh. It was pretty 
freezing. Oh. Nothing about that was enjoyable. <laughs> that was just for sanitary purposes. And it was really hot, been in the sun all day. And it's, uh, it's baking me today, it's really hot. Oh, I can finally relax. That was long. It uh, took seven hours and 20 minutes. I was predicting it was going to take seven hours with a uh, tailwind, so to do it in seven hours and 20 minutes was uh, not bad with the headwind. And I estimated it was 27 kilometers and it was pretty much bang on. I was just estimating using the topo map and kind of guessing the length of the river. And it was worth it. This is a beautiful spot. So I'm happy to be here. but. Uh, that wind killed me today. I'm zonked. To add an insult to injury, literally injury because it's re aggravated all my lingering injuries. Uh, the wind, as I was paddling down Ferris Lake, shifted from like south southwest over to west. It was starting to hit me uh, broadside, and now it's blowing north northwest, which is what it was supposed to do. <laughs> oh well. Can't fret about it. At least I got good sunshine today. Too much almost. It might be a little sunstroked. But now I can relax a little and then make dinner because I'm starving. I didn't stop all day. Well, nothing's cooperating today. Now the sky is clouded up, especially on the northern horizon. South is still pretty clear, but I need to look north tonight. Hopefully it clears up. Hard hit. I'm not feeling too much weight, but the rod really bent back. I'm not feeling much. Ah, just another pike, small one. A little bigger than the average, but still max four pounds, I would say. At least Ferris Lake is really beautiful. I'm really glad that I got here today because now I'm going to take a rest day tomorrow and spend the full day here. Every time I come around a the corner, there's another hill like that one there. Beautiful. Still overcast, and uh, the clouds don't seem to be moving at all, and I'm just exhausted. So I'm gonna go to bed. Set an alarm for I don't know midnight. It's just after nine now, and drink some more water. If you're someone who has trouble waking up in the morning, try tinkering with the right amount of water to drink before bed, and you'll find it a lot easier to wake up when you have to go to the washroom in the morning. It can be especially hard out here when it's cold out overnight. It's supposed to be six overnight tonight. And you have to get out of your sleeping bag where it's warm and go out into the darkness. But if I drink some water, I know I'll have a good incentive. Well, it's perfectly clear over the northern horizon now, now that it's morning. Aurora Quest continues. This has to be a decent fish, unless it's just fouled, because it almost ripped the rod out of the holder. <laughs> There's definitely some weight there. Couldn't say yet though. But man, maybe the rod was just at a weird angle in the holder, but almost lost it. Oh, no, it's 
it's not big. What is it? Walleye? I think it's a walleye. Yeah, it's a nice walleye. Oh man, exactly what I want for lunch, but it's pretty early. It's not big. <laughs> oh, be such a nice eater. Be nice for the for lunch, but look at that dorsal fin. Shredded. Hook got him in the back. That's why he. Uh... Thanks, bud. That's why he felt like a ton whenever they foul. So the uh, fish are biting this, but relatively small fish. So. Time to bring out the big guns. Let's see what this can do for me. Just trolling along the cliffs here. Quite beautiful. I've got a fresh shirt on underneath, unworn. And so I'm feeling fresh as a daisy. I'm at the south end of the lake now, and there's a little cabin or lodge there right at the southern end, uh, but no signs of life right now. And they've got an incredible view there of the whole lake. Well, the southern half of it and then the cliffs there. And I'm just gonna work my way back to camp. I've got uh, lots of good firewood there and a pike. The pike took this big lure and took some gashes from the hooks so I figured it was a good one to take for lunch. So I quickly got to shore, dispatched it and uh, now back to camp for lunch. Look at this incredible piece of uh, birch bark I got off of a dead tree. And as I've mentioned before in another video, these make great cutting boards. Saves you from having to use your uh, paddle and you can burn it after. Alright, got the fish all cleaned up. Filleted it and then chunked it. I prefer chunks when I'm doing fish crisp. Just batters better. Sprinkle some of this on there. Shake it around. There. All right. Got my oil in the pan. Stick stove's roaring. Almost time. It's good. I'm starving. And this will be my first uh, meat meal of the trip, as usual. I usually only have one, sometimes two. Can't wait anymore. Still a little piece. Oh, so good, every time, never gets old. Go for a few days without meat, and then have some fresh caught fish. It's so, so good. Just spotted a moose way over there. Let's see if I can get in closer. I'm way away now, I'm below the cliffs. Getting closer now. Don't think she has noticed me yet. I'm not gonna hurt you. It's okay. Stay there. It's okay. Hey, girl. Put the camera on the tripod, obviously. I'm just trying to get in closer. Oh no, just as I was going to try and get a good shot there. Oh well, that was awesome. All the while, this is the view behind me. Ferris Lake is definitely an amazing place. And this route, while I was skeptical initially, is uh, definitely making an impression. I've seen a number of pictographs over the years, but this is the coolest because I didn't know it was here. It was like I discovered it, even though I'm sure others have seen it or them, but this is so cool, really vivid too. Another one over here, that's awesome. I was looking at this little cliff from uh, 
from the water and thought that's as good a place as, of any, as any for uh, pictographs. And sure enough, so cool. Whoa, there's a big bite. A hard hit anyway. Uh, hard to tell. <laughs> Small fish are hitting this big lure. I was hoping to weed them out, but mm, there's some weight there. Everything feels a lot bigger with this lure. The lure itself pulls a lot of drag. No, it's not big. It's just another pike. I'd be happy if it just got off. Like three pound pike in this in this loop, nonstop. Echo! I knew it as soon as it hit. <laughs> oh, 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 no, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> nice, uh, would have been a nice eater walleye, but it's almost dark. Oh yeah, I hailed it. Man, these fish are hungry. <laughs> I'm working a big paddle tail now. There we go. Dorsal fin flare, thanks for that, buddy. It's a nice fish. Thank you. Nice to get in some walleye. They have not been biting during the day at all. What do we have? Dink pike. Oh, lots of action here on Ferris Lake. Fishing has been great. No, nothing big, but lots of fish. I'm on my way uh, back up the creek. I'm out of Ferris Lake now. Heading back to the Grassy River. And today I'm just gonna paddle basically until I see something I like. Camp on for tonight, and then tomorrow I head back to the car. Still a fair ways to go, I'd say. I don't know. 40 kilometers, maybe. That was a squirrel. Everything swims here. Bears, squirrels, mice. Sansawaju looming off in the distance. So I'm doing a side trip into Mond Lake, or trying to anyway, where I may even camp tonight. And right now I'm heading down that uh, Mond Creek, which is extremely meandering, snaking all over the place. But uh, I think if I get in here, the rewards will be high. Mond Lake is definitely really nice. From the south end of the lake, you can see this cliff to the east. There is a campsite on the lake. It's kind of around the middle. There's a tiny island, and I didn't see it coming in, but uh, there is a campsite on it. It's pretty good. Uh, evidently, there were some hunters here, and they did a really poor job of cleaning up. There's a goose, uh, part of a goose carcass there. And there are a couple of thunder boxes back here, which is highly necessary because of the size of the site. But again, the hunters really made a mess of uh, this site with cleaning their geese. Anyway, it's pretty good aside from that. I'm just going to stop here and have a nice big lunch. That trip into Mond is paying dividends because when I got back to the river, the wind had died off. It's pretty much calm right now, and the current of the river is finally doing its job. Uh, it has been the whole time, but... 
I, you haven't been able to tell because of the headwinds. But now it's helping me along and it's nice making good progress, which is good because my right wrist is uh, really killing me. Closing in on 20 kilometers for today with that side trip into Mond Lake. All I really want tonight is to be able to see the mountain from my campsite. So hopefully I can find one where that's the case. Sansawaju just came back into view. What a beautiful mountain. Nice cliffs. And that canopy starting to change more and more. Man, it makes me wish I was here in two weeks. Cool. It almost has the shape of like a volcano. It's really unique. Almost in Degrassi Lake now. Evidently there wasn't a site on the river with a view of the mountain, unfortunately. So, I hope there's something here on Grassy. I, re I really don't know what the campsite situation is, but as you can see behind me, there's some stuff going on. And I'd really like to get uh, camp set up now. I just, I hope it uh, holds out for tonight because I just want to saddle up in the hammock with my book. That's all I want for the rest of the day. It's been over 25 kilometers now. Massive beaver lodge here. Grassy Lake is a bit of a maze. My topo is wrong. It said that I could access continue accessing the grassy river around this spot here, but it's, you can't. So now I have to go back and access it through another point further west. This is more like it. There's a real river channel. And I can see Sansuwaju again. Looks great from here. And I just saw yet another bald eagle. I've seen a lot on this trip now along with a number of otters and lots of other things that you'd expect to see waterfowl and beavers lots and lots and then the moose the bear lots of wildlife here reading uh, a book recently and they were talking about before the last ice age in this part of north america there were giant beavers like human sized <laughs> terrifying Yet again, campsite marked on the map, and I don't see anything in there. Doesn't look like a campsite to me. And this is the problem with trying to find a campsite on a route you've never done before in the evening, in a different season from the one that the map was created in. The uh, people who made the map, they came in May, and this could be a much different place in May versus September. So now, uh, I'm going to continue, I guess, to Loon Wing Lake, where there should be two campsites, maybe more. But that's three more kilometers, and I'm already well over 30 kilometers for the day, so this is starting to suck. Things are hurting. As soon as you get past the bridge uh, for the access road, the complexion of this river really changes. The river gets shallower and more gravelly, and then there are some steep, uh, sandy, gravelly banks. None of this was around for the rest of the river. It was all super grassy, dark, rocky bottom. I'm just getting into Loon Wing Lake. I'm probably five, ten minutes from camp and it's starting to rain. <sighs> At least Loon Wing looks beautiful. Nice and rocky. Finally made it. Over 35 kilometers later, finally setting up camp. Got everything under the trees in case it starts to rain again. Thankfully it didn't last. Canoes turns it upside down because I'm not getting back in it today. Uh, and the site is definitely well used. It's got a big, big fire pit and 
lots of counter space and some just uh, stuff. Never seen someone put a beer can crusher on a campsite, but it's a good idea for all the people who uh, need a little encouragement to pack out their empties. It does have some redeeming qualities, uh, which includes this long beach, the island, the whole island seems to be a beach, and then the view is really nice too. It's a nice looking lake. I'll check it out a little bit tomorrow morning before I head out, assuming it's not miserable. We'll see. There are too many mosquitoes to hang out anymore. All the warmth this week, six days straight, has brought them back. But I'm tired, so whatever. Read in bed for a bit and fall asleep in no time. I just heard the most bizarre sound. It was like a howling monkey in the rainforest. All I can imagine is that it was like uh, a young wolf or something. Packing up in the dark this morning. Still an hour till sunrise and the lake is covered in fog. I can see that with my flat, my headlamp. Alright, it's, it's almost 7 a.m. and I'm on the water. And uh, I was going to explore Loon Wing Lake, but there's no point right now. The last thing I need right now is more a longer day. <laughs> Definitely worn out from yesterday, 35 plus kilometers. I wanted to do some fishing here, but uh, at least it gives me something, more reasons to come back. Leave something to explore for next time, because this is a great route. I've been impressed. I was pretty skeptical at first. This is an excellent, excellent route. Very worthwhile. To travel on a river without any white water skill needed. There's lots of wildlife, lots of numbers of pike and walleye, so lots of reasons to come here. Sounds like there's some babies whimpering over there. So I'm now heading uh, up Sinclair Lake, that's the Loon Wing Lake there. Up that way is Sinclair Lake, part of it, and that's to the west, uh, actually the main part of Sinclair Lake. Heading back up this way, I have probably six kilometers or so left, and I'm just gingerly paddling, and thankfully it's calm, so at least there's no headwind. There's only one campsite that I'm aware of on Sinclair Lake, though there could easily be more. It's just over that way. And it's actually got a couple of burial sites on it with uh, crosses over them. I would never, ever camp there. I find that creepy and like borderline disrespectful. Uh, there are lots of sandy shorelines here all over. And I don't really see great camping on any of them but in, in any case there's great water access all over the place I'm sure you could get in somewhere and that's definitely what I would do if I were camping in this area yeah it's just really beautiful here look at this you had another bald eagle flying off along there it's kind of hidden in the trees right now but Seen tons of them, more than any other trip. So at the north end of Sinclair Lake, and I've read on Reading Lake above it as well. There are lots of trailers, and it's morning, and one of them is blasting beats. <laughs> it's uh, Better Off Alone by Alice DJ. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but also really upsetting. <laughs> There's several other trailers here on this lake and it's not even 9.30 in the morning and they're pumping music. Ooh, this is why I hate boat access lakes. <laughs> With that said, uh, I would give this route three and a half out of four. Those four criteria are scenery, wildlife, seclusion, and fishing. And the only one that I would dock marks for is seclusion. 
with all the access points on this route. At the portage here into Reading Lake, and I don't know the exact distance, but I think it's like 300 meters or so, so it's not bad at all. Right at the north end of this arm of Sinclair Lake. Reading Lake is a really nice spot. It's got crystal clear azure waters. It's deep, 41 meters. It's supposed to be a portage over to Sothman Lake where my car is, but uh, yeah, but I'm not going to do that portage. I'm just going to walk back to my car and then drive it back to Little Reading Lake. Hopefully that works out fine. This route has been incredible for portage to paddling ratio. Too much paddling evidently for my body. But I think there's probably a kilometer and a half of portaging in total. Over maybe five portages. And yeah, probably not even that much. And uh, there's, it's like an 80 kilometer route is my best estimate. So it's like an 80 to one and a half ratio. That's crazy. Something's on. Oh, yeah, just digging a little. What do we have? Laker? Oh no, it's a pike. <laughs> Pretty meaty one. Biggest of the trip, not, not saying much, but not a big pike by any means, but it's got a gut on it. I can't really show it because my hand is <laughs> covering it, but look at that, that belly. It's got something in it. Go ahead, buddy. All right, thanks. I started the portage from uh, Little Reading Lake into Sothman Lake, but now I'm just walking up the highway car. It's just easier than doing the whole portage, paddling Sothman to the car. I'll be there in a few minutes I think. Alright, back at the car and uh, the usual post-trip routine. Get batteries charging, there's one main camera battery, another cell phone charging, power bank charging, and small camera I'll charge once there's a port available. Shundies and socks, a couple squirts of cologne. And I'm good for the next trip. Time to go.